we speak the words affordable and durable, they're never really that far apart from each other, especially for consumers that are looking into an SUV because that's exactly what it is that we want. However, the product itself, well, using those two adjectives together doesn't happen as often as we'd like. Now, for many, many years, Isuzu has been in the country and has touched almost all our walks of life, from farming equipment to marine to the crawling paces inside our cities. Now, standing on affordable and durable, Isuzu has been able to make itself a household name. But because they stood on those two principles, their products weren't exactly what dreams were made of, if you catch my drift. This 2022 MUX, however, could be a different story altogether. put it, this SUV may no longer fall into the affordable category, but we are going to look into why and figure out if it's still as dependable as loyal Isuzu owners want it to be by checking out its exterior. I never thought I'd be so happy to see an Isuzu with 20s. Interior. The interior is so improved from the previous generation that it may as well be an entirely new car. It's tech. You're listening to a CD that's connected to a gooseneck system. All the updates combined and just exactly how good or bad it feels on and off the road. The weight of the steering has improved dramatically. Do you need help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph slash car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. Mysterious Utility X. Now that part I'm pretty sure on. How to pronounce its short name, not so. Mu-X, M-U-X, Professor X. I'm actually more of an Avengers fan myself, but really I am not sure. Let us know what you think we should call the car in the comments below. What I am pretty sure of, thanks to a quick browse on autodeal.com.ph, is that the model does start at just under 1,600,000 Philippine pesos. But this top of the line is 2,450,000 Philippine pesos, putting it at par with the Fortuner, and only if you select the white pearl option. Other models like the Montero, Everest, Terra, and other ladder frame SUVs start at almost 100,000 Philippine pesos less. The question is why? Based on the latest D-Max, it's a great departure from the previous generation, starting from the exterior's more attractive look. It stands with a great deal more aggression, yet contoured in a manner that it's approachable. You know what I mean? The new front grille, automatic leveling LED headlamps, and arrowhead-shaped DRLs give rise to the front clip projecting its height, with LED fog lamps tucked down low and as wide as possible. Now, the side profile is complemented with roof rails found up on top, obviously. You've got repeaters on the side mirror, a contour line that stretches almost the entire length of the car up on top, a very short one down below, and then you've got roof rails. No, not those roof rails. Those are step boards, I mean, that are found on the bottom for convenience. The one thing that kind of doesn't jive for me is the antenna found up front. I kind of wish that they would have made it into a shark's fin all the way at the back, but anyway. If you look at the previous model, it was more bulbous really. Here, they've reduced the flares above the wheels, which actually does a nice job at keeping the car sort of like flat and more classic looking. And then they also tapered the window past the C pillar, giving it a much better outline. Rated with an 800 millimeter weighting depth, the raised frame sits on 235 millimeters of ground clearance with discs up front and at the rear. And I never thought I'd be so happy to see an Isuzu with 20s wrapped in 265 50s. 
much better looking than those on the D-Max. These guys look good. Now at the rear, Isuzu flexes a little with a little something something on the rear tail lamp as well as a rear fog lamp found down below. Now we don't have any supporting documents for it here in the Philippines, but in other countries, this exact same Isuzu with this exact same engine has a towing capacity of 3,500 kilos. That's three and a half tons. Okay, so it can't play tug of war with the Incredible Hulk or something, but it can easily pull the Avengers, the Hulk and Tony Stark with his ego included. If you open her up with a power tailgate, power tailgate, mind you, it will reveal enough space to definitely put a wheelchair or a child stroller. Now, depending on how you put these backrests down of the third row, you're looking at roughly about 275 to 300 liters. Obviously, when you fold that, you're looking at a thousand. And then if you fold the second row, you're looking at almost double that space. Now, as with most ladder frame SUVs, the third row serves its purpose as intended meaning it's there if you need it, it's available. But it's not exactly where you wanna spend most of your time, even if you've got cup holders in the back and dedicated air vents to you. I will say this, however, for this MUX, the leg space in this particular one is actually pretty darn good. I might even go as saying that it might be the best in its class. Seriously, yes, I get it, I'm a short person, ha ha, get over it. But the point is, look, I've got so much room, man. Now the second row seats are extremely comfortable. I'm talking about the finish of the seats with the slight bolsters, the doors, the leg room, the headroom. See, previously the attention was really focused on the front two passengers and their comfort, but this time today, Plush has reached the second row in an Isuzu, mind you. Yes, granted, it doesn't have some of the luxuries that other SUVs have at this price point, like for example, a sunroof or a drop-down screen, but it does have amenities in the back nonetheless. For instance, it's got a center armrest with a pop-out uh, tray and then two cup holders. Not very big, but they're there nonetheless. Then you've got ball holders on either door, speakers, not one but two on each side, air vents found up on top with your air controls found here in the center up on top as well. Then down below and in the center, you've got two USB charging points and one 220 volt AC outlet. Still no magic margaritas though. You put the ha in hassle, Jack. I've never been a fan of the term new and improved because to be honest with you, how can something be new and improved at the same time? But honestly, that's probably the best way to describe the MUX's front cabin. It truly is. The interior is so improved from the previous generation that it may as well be an entirely new car. Dark leather with light stitching found all around the front cabin, including the strong dashboard and steering wheel, which is well appointed with buttons to control your trip computer and infotainment. There's a digital screen in the center flanked by two analog gauges, which work well enough, yeah, but it looks kind of dated when you compare it to the more elegant electronic parking brake. You got the shifter, silver toggles for the air, and the huge 10.1 inch infotainment screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and of course a reverse camera. The screen also has a chronometer, which can show you your pitch and your roll and your altitude. And if that alone doesn't tell you, well then the fact that this is an Isuzu and it's got a four x four system, this car can get as gnarly as you want it to get. I do have one observation, the Bluetooth system. See, when I connect my phone to it and I'm using Spotify, every 10, 15 minutes, I've noticed that the music jumps. It's so weird. It's like you're listening to a CD that's connected to a gooseneck system. Boy, that kind of carbon dates me. However, when the music kicks, well, it kicks really good. Although it's not branded, the eight speakers inside the cabin work very well. Oh, and one more thing, the dash no longer has that compartment, which really wasn't a good idea unless you were cooking tocino or tapa for that matter. We greatly appreciate you guys subscribing to our channel. And if you enjoyed this video, do consider giving it a thumbs up because it greatly helps us figure out what kind of videos you guys definitely want to see in the future.
the hood is a familiar four-cylinder, three-liter turbo diesel engine that produces 188 horses and 450 newton meters of torque mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. There are options available where you can get the 1.9 liter and there is also yet another option where you can get a six-speed manual gearbox. Now, this particular engine, the three liter, gets about 15 kilometers per liter on the highway, which is, I guess, okay considering its size and weight. What the 1.9 liter and the three liter have in common is that they now have an 80 liter fuel tank, which is huge. So if you think about it, theoretically, you could drive at 100 kilometers per hour in a straight line from Manila to Davao and still have enough fuel left to go sightseeing and have the car washed. That's actually pretty darn cool. And I also heard that the boneless crispy pata in Ricardo is actually pretty darn good. Hmm, interesting. Like the others in its class, it's got a lot of torque, yes, but it puts it down pretty well. It's not overly dramatic, but it will gradually put you in your chair. The weight of the steering has improved. It's no longer like you're trying to wrestle a gator's mouth open. No, no longer like that. It's much lighter now. It feels better on the road. It still has good weight. I mean, it's still hydraulic after all. It's not electronic steering. But now it's, it's so much better to a point where when you're driving, you know for a fact that your deltoid muscles are not going to be complaining on a long trip. So much better. The ride quality too, oh my goodness, that has improved thanks largely to the five link coil springs. It's still firm, but yet it's forgiving at the same time. So you feel very stable while still going over rough bumps. It's actually pretty darn good. The noise quality also has improved. The wind isn't a problem. The road noise isn't a problem. It's just the engine kind of creeps up on you. That three liter will uh, be heard inside the cabin. The thing though is, is if that motor can stay that clean sounding even 10 years from now, then to be honest with you, I don't really see a problem. Really the most dramatic thing in here might actually just be the proximity sensors when you're getting too close to an automobile at speed or even not at speed. And also the lane keep assist when you don't indicate to change lanes, which technically you should always use. But truthfully, it's just aids that will help the driver make you a much safer driver as well. And the fact that, well, it got five stars for the ASEAN NCAP rating, <laughs> you can't beat that really. I gotta be honest with you, when the latest D-Max came out, we were completely blown away about how good it looked. And the interior too was really something else. And we couldn't wait to jump into the car and drive it. We were let down a little bit because of the ride quality. Now, the same thing, with this MUX, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, gotta get into that car and drive it. But I was hoping that it would be a much better experience than that when we had the D-Max. And I gotta tell you, it did not disappoint. I know for a fact that when the MUX first came out, it was a good car. It had reliability, it had durability, but it didn't take a lot of boxes. In this particular model, for this particular year, Isuzu's pretty much done its homework. And I gotta say, they've clicked a lot. Not all, but they have clicked a lot. Sorry, not clicked, tick. They have ticked a lot of boxes. Click. How do you click a box? The price, however, that might even test the loyalists. The expense, you see, is just at par with the market leader, but even that has got wireless charging and ventilated seats, cool seats that in traffic feel so great. And then there are other manufacturers out there with the top of the line SUVs that have other amenities such as sunroofs and is much more affordable than this. Now, while it can make a case for itself in terms of durability, the truth is only time will tell. But considering Isuzu's track record for the many years that they've been around, this thing would probably walk out of Sokovia with nothing but a hiccup. <laughs>